Okay, so good morning, everyone. We start the first uh, round of the proposals, and, and Simo is already uh, here. We have a very tight uh, schedule. It's from one to five minutes per each presentation, so, so we have to be precise. And uh, uh, here's building on me, my colleague, who takes care of the online uh, comments and questions, and also shows the when you have maximum one minute left of your time. And uh, my name is Aya Staffans, and I, uh, we both come from Aalto and also work here in, in Finnish Center. So let's go, Simor, you are the first. We have circular economy is our first topic, and we have three proposals there which are related to this topic. So Simo, please uh, go on. Put the presentation. Okay. Hello. Morning, everyone. So I have my five minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I prepared uh, <coughs> I prepared uh, eight slides. Uh, <laughs> so 30 seconds uh, per slide. And my name is Simo Lomets, and I work here at the Chalte. And what I propose, to, the solution is for a pro problem related to Kent, related to Kent, deconstructing and reconstructing of the parts. So I'll start uh, with a short history of the uh, built environment. And uh, <clears throat> here are three examples. And uh, I found that uh, the oldest wooden building in the world has been built in the 7th century in Japan. And it's actually constructed in a way from wood, so its joints are deconstructible uh, without many mechanical fixings. So already uh, uh, 1300 uh, years ago, this principle uh, was aimed while designing design buildings. And we have also experience from uh, US and other countries from the history where wooden buildings can be deconstructed and reconstructed somewhere else. And we have examples from Estonia from where block buildings can be taken apart and put together uh, somewhere else. So when we're talking about uh, deconstructible buildings or the also in case of new buildings, we can use the term design for disassembly. Then we have two directions. We have existing buildings in the left and existing environment, but we can also talk about new buildings and, and how to create new environment. Today, I'm focusing here on the left side, only on the existing buildings. Uh, the driving force to do that is, is there are buildings available in Estonia that will be probably demolished. Approximately a quarter of our buildings will be demolished uh, by year 2050. Uh, due to those driving forces. And instead of just demolishing them, uh, which, which has been the building, uh, building uh, business as usual, uh, I propose that we should uh, uh, deconstruct these. And I, I put uh, uh, priorities here from the sustainability point of view first. Priority should be selective demolition and taking building parts uh, away as a whole. And only if that cannot be done, uh, then we should move to second priority, which is taking those materials uh, into a circularity. You have one uh, minute. Only one minute left. Okay. And by that aspect, I think we should see our existing buildings as a material banks where materials and building parts have been placed temporarily. Here are also a few examples how that has been done in the world. Uh, for instance, in Germany or, uh, already uh, 20 years ago. Some examples from material banks from Oslo, where this activity is in process. 
The samples from Estonia, three material bank for almost uh, 20 years old in Tallinn, a brand new building material circularity bank in Tartu. A few examples from recent project also in Tartu, uh, bicycle facilities uh, designed by students and made from real materials. And also this is what I'm describing, uh, this approach has been much done in theory, developed by us here at the university. So this building can be uh, cut into large elements, designed in new solutions. But this has been actually already carried out by one example when the building was transported from South Estonia to Open Air Museum. You can see joints. Of... Yeah, and that's, that's my last slide. I put uh, interested cities here. Finland, uh, Elsing was the author of this uh, proposal, and uh, the main partner from Estonia, I think, should be Tallinn. And also, uh, one example, free, the recent example from the city of Valga, where the first uh, prefabricated concrete large panel element was not demolished, but uh, they constructed. And we're testing these elements uh, here at Alta right now. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, there is a possibility to make questions on the, um, online there to the chat. Is it so? Yes. Uh, so, uh, and now we, I think if there is some direct question now, very quickly, uh, uh, yes. yes, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do you understand right that the focus of the pilot project would be on those blocks of houses and and try to kind of reuse it so yes. meaning build a couple of new houses in a couple of cities or something like that yes the focus of the pilot would be uh, concrete large panel and brick buildings okay. mm -hmm. uh, because these are the uh, main, main building types in estonia and uh, uh, also in Finland and in other Europe, Eastern European countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, please continue the discussion there in the chat. So Simo is available there if you go there and answer answer those possible questions which are online. And if so, you feel that you want to join the team as a researcher, yeah. then you can also let know Simo. Maybe they need some some further people there. Or as a company or as a city. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then we have the two second uh, topics are uh, about waste. So please, is there a Wolfgang online? Uh, there will be uh, this Hadi and Riho are, are there. Slides are down there. It's one for Hadi. Who is the presenter? They will come. OK. So please go on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Anna, Anna will put the slide on. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, um, good morning. I know that nice conference. Soon uh, we will be, you'll know about the Internet of Things. Yeah. So, um, dear guests, um, I'm representing Municipal Internet of Pins. Uh, group leader from Taltec is uh, uh, Professor Gerstberger. Um, from Taltec here is Mr. Raja and uh, I'm Riho. Please, next slide, please. Thank you. Problem is that the routine um, waste collecting is an efficient, uh, unnecessary CO uh, emission, uh, unnecessary costs, uh, pure public uh, order uh, solution. What we propose in municipal internet of pins uh, to decrease costs and environmental impact of uh, waste collection uh, up to 50%. Uh, it's direct impact, indirect uh, impact is noise traffic and uh, other issues. But last but not least, 
what we faced in practical view is to help the municipalities to uh, transform uh, to the waste collecting digitalization. Next slide, please. Uh, you see visually here, uh, what basically we're doing is that uh, uh, root, here is routine-based uh, collection, here is uh, fill-based collection. As you see from the downstairs slides, the, the roots are pretty different. Here is routine-based and uh, that's not, uh, that's uh, fill-based. Uh, that's really the practical thing, what we do, very practical. Please, next slide, please. Uh, uh, the system itself is like based on, on uh, full stack solution. Uh, uh, what uh, research is going to work with. Uh, you have two minutes. Uh, we, en uh, we engaged uh, Tallinn, uh, Estonia, Cesis from Latvia, uh, Gilberger in, from Germany and, and, uh, and Porto. Uh, what we do is municipal waste call collection audit. I have to make collection audits on the waste collection tenders, share real time field data with service providers, I mean, through the API, and uh, make urban planning uh, decisions. Please, next slide. Uh, conditions we understand, uh, we, we wanted to uh, start with these uh, four cities because we want to have the diversity of the of the situation because legislation and, and operational uh, rules are different. Uh, uh, we understand that we get several blueprints from the stakeholders and uh, we of course uh, in, uh, uh, initiate the uh, networking of the municipalities in terms of, of the benchmarking and, and best practices. Next slide, please. Um, uh, impact. Better life, uh, uh, better governance, and uh, and better citizens uh, uh, engagement uh, as we get to zero waste very soon. Next slide, please. Time to conclude. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, based on Iviat uh, technology, what we dictate data and and we provide uh, the researchers' opinion how to transfer. Uh, to digitalize the the uh, waste collection. Next slide, next slide, please. Uh, our team is very broad, best of the best of the Taltech, as you see, nine researchers. Uh, so uh, uh, we try to really contribute the the, the situation to in, in municipalities to, to make that transformation smoothly. Next slide, please. And uh, what we get is a more efficient resource utilization, waste collection optimization, uh, better uh, environmental issues. And uh, what for me is very important is that, 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 that we want to engage the municipalities and support them in that transformation. And uh, next slide, please, is final. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have about, uh, time for one question. Is it coming here, Victoria? Uh, please. Did you validate your solution with uh, garbage management companies? Are they interested in using that? Uh, depends on country on uh, on business model. If they are paid for uh, for emptying uh, empty bins, it's not wise. That's the question is of driving force, and driving force is municipality. Uh, we validated it, and for example, uh, there's a very uh, maybe Wolfgang can comment it better. But in Estonia, uh, the difference between Estonia and Germany is like uh, uh, the municipality in Germany cares about the the the, the carbon footprint and the cost. Uh, but currently, we hear uh, every one of you is paying for emptying empty bins. Every okay. one of you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, was it quite uh, answer to you, yeah? Uh, that was the answer, and the why I asked it because I had conversation with some companies during this uh, innovation week, uh, and they told that it's easier for them to empty all the bins in a row. That's why. Yeah, I yeah, this. but everybody who is uh, like researcher here, with a little bit uh, familiar with mathematics and optimization, that's <laughs> pretty light. I'm afraid. If there is a, a, a fewer collection points, it's cheaper than uh, more collection points, isn't it? 
Okay, okay, we have to go on. Uh, but please continue your discussion online. Thank you. Okay, thank, yeah, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and the second one is also the third one actually is about uh, waste uh, management. Uh, and the presenter is online, is it yeah. so? Heigo, are you there? Do we have Heigo online? If we don't, then we just skip. And we can ask once more in the end of yeah, the session. Yeah, he is from Dalvik. And we can, yeah, okay, then we take Hegel later. Yeah. If he isn't there. you Can you see him on the participant list? Anna. And then the next one is Heiko. No, he's also online. But Heiko is. So Heiko, can you, can you take it? Yeah, over. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Is it now uh, the uh, save drinking water by, is it the, this one? Yes. Okay, yes. so go on. We move to water issues. Okay, so my proposed solution is for the um, drinking water only for drinking. Proposed challenge by the port, it was proposed by Port of Tallinn. Um, the current problem or the challenge is that our um, valuable drinking water is used for many purposes that don't require actually really clean drinking quality water, so such as washing windows, cleaning streets, watering the plants in the garden, and also flushing the toilets. And the proposed solution is actually a very old one. Um, it is building rainwater tanks, cisterns, collecting and using the rainwater for most purposes where clean drinking water is not required. The problem with that is, or yeah, um, that we have, there are solutions for individual houses, one fam single family houses, duchess. Um, <clears throat> so you can easily in that case put a, a small uh, tank and collect the water, but 50% of the world's population is living in large cities. And supplying apartment buildings with, with water tanks, either um, one big localized or putting a distribution network for that in the city is very costly and has large building requirements. So the solution would be to, or uh, the idea is to put a network of smaller cisterns in, in the area of apartment buildings where there is no space for building large ones and connect them with a smart management. So if one of the smaller tanks is empty, it can pump water over from, from the other tanks. Um, and another side effect of that solution is we've all experienced it after heavy rainfall, a lot of the streets are flooded, water comes out of the canalization. And since a large amount of the water would be uh, caught by um, the cisterns that would reduce that problem as a side effect. So to conclude, thank you for giving me the po uh, possibility to present the idea. We are looking for both piloting cities, municipalities, researchers, and also companies to join the team. Thank you again, and do you have questions? Thank you, Heiko. Do you have questions to him? Yeah, I can. Okay, you, I can you have something them. in your mind. Okay, yes, please go. Yeah. Can you a little bit shortly tell what exactly would you pilot? Would you need to <clears throat> kind of build <clears throat> those systems in the city, or how would you imagine how you could pilot it? Yes, but well, one would need to select some buildings in in the city, either where there is a newly where there are uh, buildings built at the moment or some are under renovation, one would need to build a couple of cisterns. Uh, problem is, or one thing is that the houses need a second plumbing system. So you, you would have to have a separate one, one uh, pipe system for the clean drinking water and the second one for the rainwater. So okay, that most means one, need, one needs- houses. Do I understand right? Not the private houses, but mostly, I don't know, business building or the block, block of houses for living. Yes, that would be either, either um, 
yeah, business buildings, um, may, maybe governmental buildings from the city administration, okay. but especially also apartment buildings um, where the yeah, condos are owned by individual people, but the whole like that five, eight uh, or, or 13 story towers we have in Tallinn. So they have um, on, on a small footprint, they have a large uh, consumption of water. So that's what the challenge poses. I mean, apartment buildings have a much higher uh, water use than um, administrative buildings. Yeah, there's uh, Victoria has some yeah, question here. Yeah, uh, Is it so that you can hear? Uh, yeah. if, OK, I, yes. I was confused a bit by your affiliation, as it's Department of Cybernetics, uh, not civil engineering. So. Uh, which solution are you, uh, are you proposing more of an uh, IT solution or is it going to be uh, some uh, solution in the civil engineering domain? It would be solution in the civil engineering domain, but originally I am a physicist, but I'm working with civil engineers in um, yeah, building materials and I'm also working in, in IT. So we, we can do a combined solution of the civil engineering with the IT smart management. Okay. Thank you, Heiko. So thank next, you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next presenta uh, presentation is about uh, bathing water quality. And the presenter is Javier. Are you online? Hi, hello everyone. Yes, hello. I'm here. So please go on with your presentation. Okay, let me share. <laughs> Can you see the, my, my screen now? Not yet, yes. Okay, so... Okay, so, okay. Yeah. okay, now we are all ready. Okay, so my name is Javier. I am a member of CBOTS. Um, we are proposing a solution for monitoring water quality in bathing areas. So first of all, I have to say that Seabots is a Spanish company, uh, engineering company based uh, in, in Spain, Barcelona, and we are focused in marine robotics. Our main point is offering a specialized data collection and analysis services for projects related to the marine environment. So this activity is carried out by um, our autonomous robots. So as you can see in this image uh, is the SP100 Pro, uh, so we can call it like a versatile platform in which you can integrate any sensor depending on the project. Okay, so there are many applications. In this case, we can focus in different ones. For example, if we integrate different sensors, we can uh, identify different bio biodiversity in these areas, habitats, identification, bathymetries, but and also blue carbon uh, measure. But we are going to focus in the water quality. Okay, so. What is going to be the pilot? What is going to be the mission? So the first stage is going to be to set up the robot. As I said previously, we can, we can integrate any kind of sensor. In this case, we will integrate a multi-parametrical probe. So this sensor is capable to measure different parameters of the water, like oxygen, turbidity, salinity, or even in these uh, bathing areas, we can integrate the E. coli sensor for this to measure this bacteria, which is really a really a uh, threat uh, for the public health. But if we jump to the next step, it's gonna be the mission plan. So in this case, we're gonna establish a route and the drone will navigate autonomously. So the drone will take data constantly, okay? So now present, at present, uh, the way to measure the water quality is by fixed sensors. So the fixed sensor is gonna tell you the value in one specific location, but we don't know what is going on in other places in the whole area. So a mobile sensor is a perfect solution. So if we jump to the next step, it's going to be the data acquisition. All the data collected by the robots can be monitorized from any location. So it means if the robot is now working in Estonia, I can see the data in real time from Barcelona. So this is a very crucial point. And finally, we have the data management. So data management, it means that we are going to convert this data in a high value data on demand. So I'm going to show you different examples. For example, we can create heat maps. In here, we can see the bathymetry. In these maps, we can see different levels of depth. But also, we can see another, another map with the concentrate oxygen. 
So we can get these uh, the parameters stable in order to create biodiversity or uh, just for public bathing areas, okay, for, for, for society. We and here we can see- Two minutes. All right. So in here, we have another examples like a temperature, chlorophyll, pH is very important too, turbidity. But finally, we get to the uh, to the data, which is the, the most important thing. So we have different devices to get the data, but in the end, the results, we want to get the data. So if we get all the CBOTS data collected by the robots, and also we join with the third party's data, in the data hub, we can create an uh, uh, artificial intelligent models in order to prevent uh, any threat or any risk into these uh, bathing areas. The advantage for these robots is nowadays is, is, is measured. So first of all, we can access to different areas uh, with difficult access in which a conventional vessel is not able to go in. Of course, we will redu uh, reduce the cost, the operational cost up to uh, 50 percent. And also there is no human risk because these robots are unmined, there is no crew, so there is no, no human risk. And finally, the most important, uh, as I say, we process the data and we provide a high value data on demand. Okay, so finally, I'm gonna say that for these uh, models that I was talking previously, uh, we are collaborating right now with Mr. Sato ben Halian from Taltec. Also, we have two uh, uh, cities uh, interested in getting involved in these solutions, the Italian in Estonia and also the Dublin Bay in Ireland. And hopefully um, we will get more cities interested in this innovative and technological solution. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. I noticed that there might be some discussion also online, is it so, that there are questions. So please, do you see them? Here is one question uh, about uh, running the use case. Uh, very simple question. How many people are required to operate single robot? Okay, that one has to be uh, just carried out by one or two people maximum because these robots they are uh, semi-autonomous. It means that we establish a route and the robot, and the robot will do it auto auto automatically. But the point is like uh, someone has to deploy the drone into the water and remove it from the water. So in here, we need at least two people just to carry out this, this, this task. Okay, thank you. And then there is a comment from Riga City that they are interested. Aha, okay, Riga. So please contact also Riga City. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for participating. So. Uh, then we go, we still continue with the water issue. It's number six on our list, Urban Splash. Who is the presenter? Online from Dublin, <laughs> I, I guess. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, so yes, we can hear you. And please go on with your presentation. Um, just give me a second. Um, perfect. So can you all see that? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Uh, lovely to meet you. My name is Cyprian. And today I would like to talk about Urban Splash, which is a decision support tool for urban water recreation. Uh, before I go into the solution, just want to touch a bit on the challenge. So this address is the Baiting Water Quality Challenge. Um, however, um, just give me one second, sorry. Uh, however, we identified some key problems that we really want to address in this start. And that is the fact that there is um, no fit for purpose technology that can provide microbiological water quality data in a time frame that enables rapid decision making and risk mitigation. The reason for that is because culture based methods uh, are, are slow to provide results and usually take between 18 to 72 hours. Um, which makes uh, same-day sample uh, and mitigation action impossible. Um, two other underlying problems uh, we identified is that um, recreational water quality is only monitored at identified baiting sites during the baiting season. And then um, there is um, a lack of, a lack of uh, sound communication in terms of the public risk uh, associated with, with poor water quality. Um, in terms of the impact, 
these issues have uh, on our on our society, particularly in EU. There is little we know about them. Uh, however, um, because uh, most most waterborne disease uh, illnesses go go unreported. However, in the USA, for example, an estimated four billion surface water events occur annually, which results. Uh, in in uh, in an estimated cost of 2.2 to 37 billion uh, uh, annually to the to the healthcare system, um, but waiting water quality also has a sizable positive impact on, on local communities and tourism, and that comes through through site visitation. Um, and for example, a study in UK uh, reported that 52 percent. Um, uh, site visitation increased by 52% when the waiting water quality was improved from, from good to excellent. So to go into the solution, um, Urban Splash is a complete digital uh, platform for uh, urban water recreation. Uh, it will be developed, it will be co-developed with cities and it will target the needs of the multiple stakeholders, uh, including local authorities, regulators, citizens, uh, and, and businesses. Uh, it will, it will incorporate three main modules um, to make this, this solution uh, happen. And the first one is the data platform, which is the backbone uh, of Urban Splash. The data platform will, will provide uh, near time, near real time in situ data on E. coli, forecasting, and uh, simple public health. And it will enable the community and the users to take informed decision in near real time and plan their water-based uh, activities uh, to, protect, uh, to protect their health. For implementation, the, the data platform will make use of um, state-of-the-art IoT sensors, machine learning workflows um, for, for validation and forecasting, open source data that's already available, but it would also tap into existing innovations like the Water Institute, including the Colisan system, which is a rapid field test kit for E. coli, and the CS Sentinel, which is uh, an autonomous uh, submersible E. coli sensor currently under development. You have uh, one the minute. second, the second component is going to be the data platform, the digital learning center, uh, which will be developed to facilitate public engagement. Uh, they will be uh, bespoke for each city, and through this uh, center, community can learn about their waterways, their interests and link with arts, culture, and heritage, and promote uh, water and environmental literacy and safe water recreation. And finally, the community engagement tool again will be developed to enable citizens to take ownership of their waterways and empower, uh, empower the community. Um, users will be able to report pollution events, pollution sources and pressures, results of citizen science activities or, or cleaning campaigns. So uh, to conclude, this is us, we are Urban, urban Splash. To date, we believe two cities are interested in piloting the solution, Tartu in Estonia and Balbriggen in Ireland. Uh, and we have a multidisciplinary team put together. However, we are still lacking expertise in molecular biology, in particular microbial source tracking. So uh, we are looking forward to get in touch with anybody that might be interested in covering that expertise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cyprian. Uh, there is already one question online. Is it so? Yes, one question. Can CS Sentinel handle moving flowing water, for example, installed on both or streams? Uh, can CN Sentinel handle moving water? Moving or flowing water? Yes, so CS Sentinel um, is not developed at the moment. We're working on it. It's a submersible uh, in situ sensor. So you just deploy it and go away. Um, absolutely. It's designed to be to to work autonomously in any type of, of, of water environment. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have questions from the room? No, uh, something. So a note from Helsinki that they were interested in something, was it? Yes, there is one note from Helsinki that they would like to co collaborate with, With I think the first uh, first uh, topic, the destructing and restru restructing building block oh, parts. Yeah, the so recycling uh, yeah. of building materials. Yeah. Okay. So just for everybody, like all the contacts of the idea of us at our homepage and all the contacts of the cities at our homepage. If you still miss any context, please ask me and I can really match you with, with the right people. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Cyprian. And please uh, continue follow their, their also the online if there come occur some, some questions to you later. 
Then we go, we continue with the water challenge. And uh, we have a tunnel here from Baltic. So please go. No. Go. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. I, yeah, so many keys there that I, I made a mistake. So you come from South, but please go on with your yeah. So your presentation. welcome. <laughs> so I'm happy to present uh, here. So I am professor at the University of Tartu, and my background is infectious diseases and public health. And uh, and and uh, this is my viewpoint to the, to the water problems. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. So. Basically, every city tries to have a beach, and uh, and uh, next please, and uh, at least some kind of beach. So, uh, so actually, if we go talk to to different local communities, local uh, <coughs> governments, then very often we have actually working with water problems with, with local governments, and they have problems with their beaches in water quality. Next one, please. So uh, you already had a discussion about uh, water quality uh, monitoring. So one issue is the speed. And uh, for this, you had uh, to have rapid sensors. But sensors is not the end of the story. So last two presentations, you basically had about the, the rapid monitoring. But basically, if uh, the cities come to us, then next, please, then the question is what to do next. So uh, if the water, wastewater is bad, then, then it can be agricultural impact, uh, uh, inflows, uh, bad wastewater treatment plants, uh, using uh, animals in taking care of the beach. That also happens in Estonia more and more often. And human behavior is, is that, that's a really, really serious problem we, we discuss actually. That's not not a joke, actually. This is this is what is happening, and we we need to uh, deal with it. And uh, and uh, from my viewpoint, we are we are working next, please, also with antibiotic resistance, because this is increasing problem that resistant bacteria and antibiotic residues go to the environment, and people get infected with resistant organisms uh, in pe on beaches. So next one, please. And and so so basically, what we suggest, and we certainly need to to go in this direction. We have all the pieces, but we need to have fast detection, bacterial genomics, molecular biology uh, put together to data analysis, feedback, and then the batches for actions. So we worked on this uh, in in Estonia, in in Europe, in from the from the antibiotic resistance viewpoint, uh, uh, like in general, and public health viewpoint, we, we are currently trying to build an antibiotic resistance surveillance system in Estonia that uh, connects hospitals, human health and animal health and, and agriculture, and, and, uh, and there is certainly need to, to add the, the water surveillance uh, uh, into this uh, uh, framework. You have two minutes. And uh, yes, so basically this uh, idea to, to come here was triggered by Park and Dublin and, uh, and uh, we were kind of uh, so far in a hurry because uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, we, we actually had already uh, discussion with uh, previous ideas that uh, we we will connect them, and uh, but uh, this will be done in the next step. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So, uh, what kind of comments or questions do we have from the audience? There's nothing online, no. Nothing yet. No, nothing yet. So please, uh, Victoria. Uh, I didn't understand what kind of solution do you offer? What kind of tool? Well, well, actually, actually, the solution is that we will have those pieces uh, available, but we don't have a, a water quality monitoring system available to put in place. So we can have a detector, but uh, that's not enough because because then the city government. Uh, comes and, and asks, what should we do? And, and, and for this, what should we do? We need to do some research, but actually we can 
we, we have the tools to, to make a package together and have the citizen and, and involvement and so on. So, so basically we have the pieces, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we don't have, nobody can provide integrated solution. Integrated solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, and what would be the piloting? The pilot thing would be to, to have the detectors, for example, mm -hmm. that be shown here. Uh, we are doing the source tracking to put them together to try the to try the integration uh, system uh, at the data management level and and to to start building the uh, citizen involvement. Uh, uh, Tool also sad because because the citizens are actually very interested if they go to the beach say 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 are disappointed if there is a red flag and that so on and and it's actually big economic cost for the for the local government if it's a resort then if it's closed then there is a big problem and then people are actually interested in in knowing more about the water quality so okay. so so yes. to pilot how to engage them and for data to show and then how they can. Okay. Thank you, Tanele. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then uh, we go to the proposal number eight, uh, which is photonic sensor for safe water. And we go back to Dublin. Uh, Julia, are yes. you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, we can, if you put the presentation mode on, so it's... Okay. Okay, okay. thanks, go on. So, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Julia. I am professor at Technological University Dublin in Ireland, and I'm going to talk about a photonic sensor for safe water. I'm lucky because a lot of the background already been <laughs> presented by the previous speakers. So we all know the benefits of water for recreation. Uh, exercise improves both physical and mental health and other benefits come from employment and economic value of tourism. However, um, contact with fecally contaminated water poses serious health risks. Studies show that bathers or swimmers have 86% higher risk of developing illness. And the presence of bacteria E. coli is an indicator of microbial uh, contamination. The risk is highest after poor weather conditions and if the water is swallowed. So um, the local authorities uh, identify, um, um, prevent and, and safeguard public health by identifying these bathing sites and determining the length of the bathing season. And then they periodically take samples from this water during the seasons, analyze them for bacteria and issue warning if necessary. So this is from our Dublin beaches, the poster. Um, currently, pathogen levels are measured by analyzing bacterial growth using traditional analytical laboratory methods. Um, the method is called ELISA uh, is the golden is the gold standard for E. coli detection. However, it is um, very complex. It's very labor intensive and cannot be used for real time detection. Uh, so, therefore, the main challenge for the cities is the timeliness of these measurements and warning. At the moment, the delay between the taking taking of samples and obtaining results can take up to a week. Um, to provide conclusive data. And this delay poses serious health risk as it leaves uh, people vulnerable to waterborne illnesses during this waiting period. So uh, our proposed solution is a photonic sensor based on optical fibers that are known for high sensitivity, lightweight, small size, and most importantly, uh, rapid or real-time detection. Our sensor, um, consists of an optical fiber that launches light into this um, glass micro cavity, which is really small, about 300 um, microns in diameter only. And it works based on the detecting the changes in refractive indices of the water near surface. Um, to make this sensor sensitive to a particular bacteria, the surface must be functionalized to attract these E. coli bacteria to the surface. And the entire sensing system, um, can look something like this. It's really small and includes an optical source detector 
naturally our packaged sensor head and um, signal processing unit and uh, user interface. So we aim to achieve real time and um, and specific detection of um, E. coli with a very low limit of detection um, of 100 um, CFU coliniform units per milliliter. This would allow to reduce the delay between taking the sample and obtaining results, thus reducing the health risk of illness for public. Um, so there's some work to be done and the pilot would focus on First, the development of the functional layer for the sensor with high selectivity to E. coli. We would need to engage with chemists on this and uh, to develop a suitable packaging, uh, water sampling protocol and an optoelectronic readout module for the sensor. The sensor could be operated manually or could be uh, put on a, on a floating platform and uh, then transmit the data um, um, on wirelessly. Uh, we will address the cross sensitivity and surface contamination challenges. Um, and after making the, the series of prototypes, um, uh, we would evaluate this in the real conditions in collaboration with um, cities. And then the feedback from the field trials would be used for, uh, by us, by our team, to refine the final sensing solution. And of course, on the other hand, the field trials would be used by the local authorities to support their routine monitoring and to evaluate the suitability of this solution with reference to standard methodologies. Okay. Uh, so to conclude, uh, we are looking for additional piloting cities and, of course, additional researchers to contribute to the development of our solution. Thank you very much. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. So, yeah, there is already one question to you on the chat. Can you see it? Or, or Pilvi, you can yes. see it. So. Uh, the first question is, can sensors handle... Uh, sorry, that was the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Again, it's the same question, actually. Uh, can sensors handle moving uh, flowing waters uh, mm -hmm. on board on streams or streams? And then the yeah. other question, how modular would it be, be in the terms of other sensing objects? So yes, the, the idea is that you can handle uh, and, 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 and moving and flowing water, absolutely. Um, how modular would it be in terms of other sensing objects? And I, as I said, it could be made really small and depending on the, um, let's say, uh, the level of cooperation, it either could be operated manually uh, with a suitable, um, very simple interface, or it could be placed on a um, um, floating or semi-automatic um, uh, platform. And then uh, again, it's just a matter of developing uh, the electronics, um, um, it could transmit um, the data um, online if necessary. It could okay. be supplemented with other sensors as well and work together um, to calibrate out, you know, things like salinity and um, perhaps other contaminants. Okay, thank you, Julia. And one uh, about accuracy. How is the accuracy of the photonic solution compared to culture growth solution? Um, of course, the accuracy of the traditional laboratory um, method is very hard to compete. However, um, um, as I said, it, at least initially, the sensor could be used as um, to supplement the, the current monitoring. So the, um, the, the detection limit that we're targeting is actually quite good and it would be very competitive. Uh, but low but but not as good as the traditional techniques but again the the gain here is that to uh, to trigger that something is um um the the the, the contamination is higher than than it should be and then uh, provide this rapid uh, warning okay thank you thank you very much okay thank you goodbye and please continue if you, if there come some questions online julia then we move uh, to the last topic of our session it's about people center city we have two presentations there uh, and the first is ivo fridolin from tavec and citizen well-being and diagnostics 
Christian is, is presenting. Ah, okay, but okay. Okay. So Christian is Christian is making the presentation. So you, we can already see yours. Please go on. We don't hear you yet. Yeah. So I don't know if you're muted. Yes, or yes. I think now you should hear me. <laughs> I yes. didn't find the button in, in, in the in the in the beginning. So thank you. Uh, I, I think you should see my slides. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Christian Bilt, and I'm from the Department of Health Technologies, Tallinn University of Technology. Uh, and our project idea, Citizens Wellbeing Diagnostics in Virtual Reality, is the response to the challenge uh, well-being in uh, virtual townscapes from Narva under the uh, section of the people-centered city. So the challenge from Narva is related to the city planning using the virtual uh, reality tools. The city planners cannot be sure or guarantee that the quality of the urban space will be better after the completion of some urban planning project. Uh, therefore, it would be better to know in ahead uh, what impact it has to the residents. So Narva proposed the challenge to use the virtual reality tools to assess more objectively what the residents feel, uh, what the uh, residents uh, really feel about the proposed uh, urban project. Uh, our solution to this challenge can be divided into uh, two parts. Uh, firstly, to develop a tool which can be used to measure the physiological and psychological well-being profile of the residents in virtual reality. And secondly, to develop a service that uh, the decision makers can use to understand how the residents feel uh, physiologically and psychologically in case there will be proposed uh, some architectural changes in the city environment. Our methodology of well-being profile combines uh, physiological and psychological measurements and spatial quality parameters to assess the well-being profile of the residents. Uh, different uh, physiological signals are measured and recorded from the um, uh, city residents. As well, uh, they will answer to the um, psychological questionnaires while observing the urban environment. We have developed this methodology in previous well-being score project of the smart city, and part of the methodology is uh, filed as a patent application. In this project, we plan to optimize the um, uh, we, we plan to optimize and uh, test our methodology in the virtual reality environment. Therefore, there'll be, there uh, will be carried out as well uh, as part of the project measurements on city residents to test the methodology. In addition, during this project course, we will automate our algorithm to have uh, faster processing and analysis times that will lower the cost to the service. Uh, in the second part of the project, we will develop the well-being profile virtual reality service that will include uh, um, uh, the following parts. Uh, in the preparation part, uh, the 3D videos or, uh, or modeled environment that is going to be assessed uh, will be prepared for the physiological and psychological measurements in virtual reality. During measurement part, uh, the measurements will be carried out on a sample group of the city residents and uh, the signals and answers to the questionnaires will be collected. In the analysis part, the automated algorithms will be applied to the collected data and the results will be computed. In the feedback, we will include the interpretation of the results and advice to the city planners and uh, uh, decision makers. We see that this project will help to make better spatial decisions and will be a tool and service for the city planners. As a result, uh, the developed methodology will help to provide a more objective, inclusive and uh, people-centered input value about the urban planning projects. Um, the usage of this method methodology will prevent unreasonable, unreasonable uh, spatial decisions before they uh, will be realized as um, expensive public space projects. In addition, yeah. It, yeah, in addition, it will help to form a shared understanding of the projects and will reduce possible uh, conflicts. So currently we have uh, our inter interdisciplinary team with the uh, competences in uh, physiological and psychological measurements and in spatial analysis. 
We will involve to our team the virtual reality experts from VR Lab of Estonian Academy of Arts and from Taltech. And we have already uh, had the first contacts. Uh, as well, we have had contacts with the cities to find partners uh, to this project. However, in case there is a city that plans uh, architectural competition during 24 to 26, where the 3D model of uh, the building of urban site or uh, the, the building or urban site will be included and they are interested in participating as a partner in this project, then please uh, contact with, with us. We are also uh, looking as well the, um, at the moment the, the, for the competence in, uh, in business development to this project. So also uh, this uh, competency uh, we are currently missing and, and looking for. And so thank you for your attention. Thank you, Christian. Do we have questions? So it is using this 3D models. And, and virtual environment settings. Where do you, Christian, get those, uh, you mentioned those architect competitions, but, but the quality of those models is quite a crucial question when you try to study in a way as you propose here. Have you been discussing of the quality of the models, how, how, they, yes. how well they fit to your... Yes, to your yes. We, we, have, we have discussed uh, not, not particularly the architectural competition, uh, models uh, we have discussed the model quality with uh, with a vr lab from estonian academy of arts and we have seen uh, their uh, works as well like uh, like and, and the quality what what can be uh, achieved so of course this is the uh, uh, how to say the important point that the representation in virtual reality is really uh, with has, has a very good quality so uh, this is the definitely important point and we have this we have discussed it uh, in with the uh, Estonian academy of arts yes yeah because it's the valid, uh, validity of the study it's very important question so yeah. please uh, do we have some questions online no that's all mm -hmm. nothing here from the room but thank you for your presentation and interesting project mm -hmm. thank you okay bye and then we have the last one here and now, Simone. Uh, we no, have... you are okay. Uh, I'm uh, wondering, uh, we can share the screen, right? Okay. okay. Uh, so, please. Is sure. the, uh, the conference. Good morning. Uh, I'm Brie Tinkler, uh, landscape architect. And uh, what we are proposing is a citizen engagement tool. So as we know, um, the problem with citizen engagement is that it needs a lot of people. The questionnaires are really long. It takes so much time to get the citizens to participate in some discussions. So um, the idea is to make them shorter, make them more attractive to the citizens. So the, uh, the idea uh, came from Ulamiste City's uh, problem, where they want to improve the quality of space for their citizens. Um, so uh, we would like to get uh, uh, lots of answers, lots of good answers for a really for the precise locations at precise time. And for that, um, uh, uh, yeah, the goal also improving physical, mental, and social well being, and it helps the decision making. And the uh, solution for that is app, and the next one, uh, where we can uh, geolocate the person and ask like really easy, simple, understandable questions. At first, uh, for example, if you take the, the water uh, issues that we have here, the person is at the beach and we can ask, is the beach clean? And that's it, just yes and no answer and that's it. So let's say we ask like four people there and they all say no, then the AI detects, okay, there can be some kind of problem and the next person they can ask, 
is the is is it dirt on the bleach beach or is it littered or does the water smell funny or something like this? Just one question, and you can answer it, and it also gives the the next level for the question. So we, it's really simple and just one question, one answer, and the time is counted and the location is counted, and. Um, there is AI and machine learning uh, scripts behind it that uh, are calculating, measuring, and putting everything together uh, with uh, environmental aspects that we are monitoring, like the weather, noise, wind speed. So we can actually make the decisions based on location, based on really simple answers. Um, this app can be standalone, or it can be integrated to some app already, like Ulam City has their own app for their own citizens. So it can be part of that. Um, so yeah, and hopefully we can, uh, we can get the, uh, Community is more involved in uh, in the decision making and uh, participating, especially if they see uh, the results happening fast. For example, if they report that the beach is dirty, it can be cleaned like really fast. This information goes to the city or whoever is responsible for that, and uh, I, I believe it's a quite uh, useful tool. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Are there questions online or from the room? Yes, quite many. I have a question. Yeah, please. How do you engage people to yeah, that's, participate? I have the same question. How, how, how will you engage me to download this app and answer one question? Yeah. Um, so in these, for Ulex, for Ulamist example, they can uh, direct their own workers, citizens to use it. Because uh, if you say that this is for you, for improving your environment, just one question a day, it's not that. Uh, it can pop, uh, the question can pop up like be real app. You know, it can pop up anywhere where you are. Mm -hmm. You're standing at the bus, bus stop and it asks, is it noisy? Yeah, yeah, it's noisy, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. So meaning you don't need to have downloaded it, or you well, still you, need to have downloaded you, you the app. Have to download the app. Yeah. Exactly. And you have yeah. to give the permissions because it's uh, location-based. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this this motivation of uploading different applications. So yeah. that is something we have found quite challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, there's no one, then I give the kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. OK, I'm kind of curious. What do I gain from downloading your app, yeah. for example? You're getting better environment, the living environment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because that's also related so, to so other questions. Like <laughs> engagement, what we usually do as a landscape architects, we try to involve a lot of people to ask their opinion and design the space for them. We're not designing for a little bit for us, but mostly for users. And it's really hard to get the people together at one point, ask to have this discussion. And then the, the questions, if, if you're gonna give you a questionnaire, it can be based on your current mood, it can be based on your situation in work, it can be based on you know the what weather outside at this moment, you go outside it's cold, but maybe on the summertime it's really nice. So the the most important part is yeah, the location based and time based. So we know what actually happening outside when you're answering this one question. Yeah, one a critical point is also this: how do you then guarantee the process when you get that you you give that information? So it is very important in a way also build the process so that it really happen, it really changes the environment. So that's another other end of the of the story in a way which you have to take into account. Okay, is there a couple of questions? Couple of questions. Yeah. There. Okay, so it's inspiring uh, people. Cool idea. Uh, the question is, how would you streamline filter the message to the competent authorities? Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular, when pollution events are reported, for example. So how can you kind of... Uh, well, 
I guess we have to well, think about it more and design it more that uh, how we can involve everybody who is uh, interested and who is everybody who is responsible for, for some changes. Exactly, yes. And then a final question, have you checked out other similar existing tools, applications? Uh, no, I haven't, but if anybody has some cool uh, cool apps that we can check or, or take. Uh... I, th I think there are examples, at least not enough. Yeah, already okay. Is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you for this. And we still have some minutes. Uh, if Heigo Mölder no, is there. His, no. his kid is unfortunately ill. Okay, okay. So, so, yeah. So now we have done all those and heard all those presentations. So, do you still have something in your mind which you would like to share here? So I would definitely yeah. say that for this, uh, for the bathing water quality, there were quite some yeah. ideas. So it makes sense really for the for the authors and for the cities <clears throat> to sit down maybe and have an online online meeting and see who could join forces and and maybe still there can also be two or three different proposals, I guess. But uh, but the difficult question is for the cities, of course, which ones they prefer and are ready to contribute. So that's something something to think about it. And yeah, definitely discuss it with the cities and see it in practical terms, how you get it actionable and find out really what's already on the market. So we hope you make it clear for yourself when you when you come for, for November, oh, sorry, February 29. But yeah, now we have time here. The people can network here and we have some lunch offered for us there and we will uh, meet half past 12 Estonian time.